Hey everybody and welcome back again. Keith Gebar here with LearnTechTrading.com and today we're going to finish part two of our IoT blocky programming uh, tutorials. So if you did not catch the first part, it's linked up somewhere at the top here of the screen. Let's get started. As you can see, this is the lab topology that we've already built. But now we got to take it a step further and start implementing block reprogramming. To do so, let's go ahead and click our SBC board and you're going to click the programming tab. Now you should have already set this up in the last video. Again, if you did not, go back. And we need to start telling our program what we want it to do. So we're gonna start here in program, and I'm just gonna move this over so we can see it a little better and give us some more screen real estate, okay? So what we wanna do is create some functions, or I'm sorry, variables. Because the variables are what we're gonna to call to action as we build this program. So the first thing we could do is drag over this variable and it's gonna say set item to, it's just blank right now. But what we want to do is create a new variable and we're just going to name this guy motion now as soon as you do that if you click variables you'll notice it does indeed drop that variable into the list of variables that we can work with now we also do need to uh, set some functions and we're just going to create some to do's okay now again name this something different i'm just going to name this guy motion sensor hit enter you'll notice it indeed does drop this down here as well now, we do need to create a couple more of these. I'm just gonna put this one over here, and I could read, or name this one, read from sensor, whatever you choose, but if you're trying to follow along easily, I recommend you follow along with what I'm actually putting in here. And again, we wanna grab another one in here, and this one's gonna be uh, motion entry. And you have to excuse my voice today, I kinda lost it after the Super Bowl. <laughs> Go birds, all right? I'm a, Huge Eagles fan, as many of you know. So there we go, we have this motion entry in here. And now we need to start telling what we're reading from. So we have all these different pinouts on our board. We need to let the program recognize those. So to do that, we're just gonna click pin access and we're gonna grab in one of these pin mode slots. Now, we could start off with pin slot zero because we are reading from pin slot zero, which is our motion detector, right? And I could just click duplicate. I'm just going to duplicate this several times here. And in fact, we're going to duplicate this. Uh, so we have six total. So one, two, three, four, five, and one more six. We could just drop him in here. Now we're going to have slot zero as an input. We're going to have slot one as an input. We're also going to have slot one as an output. We're going to have slot two, three, and four here. And these are all going to be outputs, okay? meaning we're not putting any information into this pin. So the only two that we could essentially use as inputs with this configuration is the door and the motion sensor. Now, bringing this back over, we need to give it a loop, okay? We need to tell it while it recognizes this input, do what with it, okay? So we're gonna create a uh, loop here and we're just gonna do a repeat while. So this is creating a while loop. Now we need to grab some of our functions and apply them within this loop. So one thing we also want to do is go to, um, where is it? Uh, let's go to math, no nope, loops, uh, logic. We need to grab true over here. So while the input is true, what's it need to know? Well, it needs to know about these functions. So we're going to use uh, read from sensor and we're also going to use motion entry. So we could drag him in here as well. Now we need to give it a delay so it knows how many milliseconds to do these for. And with this, we're also gonna change the value here to 5,000. And this just helps make it easier when we're trying to set up the SMTP for the email. It'll go through and only send one email and not, you know, 100 some emails. Now there's various ways you can program this. I'm doing this as simple as possible for you guys. But again, take this knowledge and leverage it and expand from it. And if you wanna learn programming well, again, check out Mr. Fred at getmecoding.com. His YouTube link is in the description below and I highly, highly recommend you guys go down there, pay him a visit, subscribe, and learn some more programming basics. I mean, it might seem very fundamental. You're learning some scratch, you're learning some visual programming within the blocky type coding paradigm, but it just sets you up so you have that super, super foundation that you can take and grow with you. So from there, we need to start setting what we're doing with our variables. Now I do wanna to go to math, we're gonna grab this little zero here, we could put him here, and we also need to grab our function and our motion sensor function.
function and apply it to that variable. Next thing we need to do is go back to variables. We're gonna grab this guy and we're gonna set motion and then digital read. So we could go back to pin access and we're gonna say digital read slot zero since that's the motion detector. Now one other thing I wanna do here is give it a, um, a text command, which is print. So this is gonna echo anything out within our output down here. And the reason why we wanna do this, and first of all, let's set that to uh, motion. The reason why we wanna do this is because we need to know what the value for motion will be. So in fact, if I go over here and I just click run and I just hover over my motion sensor, we should get a value here 1023 so we need to know about that value as we continue so now that we know what that value is we could click uh, stop right there and let's continue programming this so within our motion entry we need to give it some logic right if it's going to do something if something is true do this otherwise do that so we're going to drop him right in there and for this we also need to set a variable and we're going to set um i'm sorry we need to do where is it? Let's go back to logic. We're gonna grab this guy here. So if motion, grab our variable, if our motion variable, uh, he needs to go in that block right there. Uh, I keep grabbing the wrong one. Grab that. If our variable motion is equal to, and now we can just right click duplicate this guy, and, and this is where we need to enter our value. So this will be 1023. Then it's going to perform the actions that we want it to. So here we could also just go back into our pin access and we need some analog rights and digital right or custom rights. And this goes back to when I told you guys earlier, whenever you click on any of these devices, you kind of get an idea of what you need to do. So this one here is saying use the custom right API and then obviously our LGB will use the analog right API for the control of all this. So that's where I'm getting this information from. So we could pull over two analog read and writes, or I'm sorry, two analog writes. So I'll just pull him over, drag and drop him. I could just duplicate him, snap him into place. And he's going to be slot three and he's going to be slot two. And then we could just duplicate these values, drop it in here, drop this guy in here. And he's gonna be 1023, uh, not Q. And then this guy is going to be zero. Now we need our custom writes. So let's go to pin access custom right okay and we can duplicate him while we're here snap him into place he's going to be pin slot one and he's going to be pin slot uh four now we can just duplicate this guy one more time he's going to be 1023 and then this guy again will be uh zero or i'm sorry this needs to be two and that's for our light now this will work, but when it goes off, when it does not detect motion, it's not gonna know what to do. So that's the else part. If this detects motion with this value, do this. Else, meaning if it's not recognizing this motion, just go back to this. So the else will almost act as the default state that our environment's going to be living in while the program is running. So we could actually just copy, we're gonna duplicate these guys. We need the analogs again. And then we need our custom rights. We could just drag him down and one more. And basically these values are just reversed. So he'll be zero, he'll be 1,023, and then he will be zero, and the bottom guy will be zero as well. Now I wanna take it a step further because right now if we run this, we're only gonna be able to notice it within our actual topology environment. I wanna also be able to dictate and reference this within our a little printout here from the visual scripting so we could add some more print text here so we could just drop a print in here and then we could just grab a uh, where is it we need the quotations here so whatever we have in here this is a string it'll just print it out it's not going to perform any function anytime anything is in those quotation marks so with this we could just say uh, vault door is open and I could just fix that. Notice it does not matter what spaces because it's within those that string quotations. And then I could just right click this, duplicate this, drag this down, and we could just say close or whatever else you want to. So right now, as it sits, if we run this program, everything's going to work without email. And I'm gonna run this and show you. So if we run this, so you're seeing by default's close, our LED light is now coming on 
but it, well, it's red, indicating that there's no motion, the door's not open, and the light is off. So if I right click and drag my mouse over the sensor and give it a couple seconds, you'll notice the door does open, the light comes on, and our LED indicator does turn green. But we wanna be able to send an email. So first of all, did we ever set up our SMTP emails within here? No, we did not. So let's go to our mail server and let's go to email and let's uh, configure this guy. So actually we need to go to services, email, and we're gonna set the domain name as learntechtraining.com. We can just click set. We're gonna create two users, SBC, Cisco will be the password, click the plus button, and then admin, and then Cisco yet again. Again, just for simplicity within the lab. We could close him out, we could go to our laptop, and we need to go down here, and we're gonna configure the name as admin. Email address will be admin at learntechtraining.com. Incoming servers 1.1.1.1, .1 .1 .1 .1. outgoings 1.1.1.1. .1 Username again is admin, password is Cisco. So we could save that. Now let's go to our SBC board. Now I like to do it both here and in the program because then we could send and re uh, reply back to emails from here. So this is gonna be SBC, SBC at learntechtraining.com. Again, mail servers 1.1.1.1, 1.1.1.1. And then username will be SBC, password is Cisco. Save him, and all is good for our email server. However, we need to add some more programming code in here to make that work, to where it automatically sends out the email. So we could just click stop here, and we need to create another uh, function. So what I'm gonna do is create another to do something. I could just put it over here since we have room, right? Let me just move this up. And I'm going to name this email, right? Now, what we need to do is another if statement. So we're going to just say if do, all right? So we're going to go to logic, if do, all right? We're going to pull over our variable, and we're just going to pull in motion. And then what we need to do is create our email. So if we go down here to email, we need to set up our client, and then we can also click send email. So this is very simple but I'm also going to create another text with a printout stating in the actual program here that an email is being sent. Email is sent, all right? Now, for here, set up your SBC client again, sbc at learntechtraining.com. Server will be 1.1.1, I got a 1.1.1.1. User, again, will be SBC and password will be Cisco, nice and simple. Send email to, okay, we're sending it to the admin at learntechtraining.com. Subject, vault door notification. This is a notification letting you know, uh, if I could type, you know, vault door has been opened, boom. So right there, we're good, but we need to add the function within our loop. So go back to functions, grab our email, go down here, click that, and we should be good, guys. Let's go ahead and run this. You can see everything's defaulting back over here. And now if I add motion, right, our door opens, a light comes on, our LED indicator turns green. You can see vault door opened, email was sent. So if I go to this laptop, and if everything worked properly, click receive, there we go. This is a notification letting you know the vault door has been opened. We could reply to this, thank you very much. Boom, send it. Now if we go back to our SBC board, here's where I was saying it was nice to be able to configure our email right in here. That way we could receive any replies back to it. Pretty cool stuff guys. Again, this is all basic programming, but the beautiful part about Blockly programming is it's very, easy to understand the structure of the language you are learning. I highly, highly recommend you guys learn Blockly. Programming is an invaluable asset moving forward, especially with network engineering when you start diving into Python and some other scripting languages we could use like Tickle, for example. But even though Python is not necessarily C++ or any of the others, it's all growing off of those older languages. I mean, C++ is still very, very popular out there to this day. 
So even learning some basic JavaScript, which is what Packet Tracer is using, the ideas and the logic behind how the variables, the functions, the math, the loops, or any of the other features we are using in the language itself is just setting up so you have that logical understanding of the order in which the syntax needs to go. So again, check out Mr. Fred at Get Me Coding. His link to his YouTube channel is in the description below. Smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, subscribe to Learn Tech Training for more free resources. All right guys, I'll see you in the next one.